everybody. It's time for It's All About Food with your host, Karen Hartglass and Gary Dimate. Hi, Karen. How you doing? I'm good. Happy ca- Thanksgiving. Happy Thank you. Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're just finishing up the leftovers. Yeah, we had a great menu. We did. Right? Yeah, we had a great menu. It, we had promised each other not to cook or not to go crazy like we always do. And somehow we ended up in the kitchen all day. But at least it wasn't two or three days. It was just one day. It was just one day. And I really thought we did quite well with only one day in the kitchen. I do too. I mean, I... we still ended up making everything from scratch. Yes. Starting with your two glorious pies. Thank you. In the morning. I made pies in the morning. Right. Well, you know, something that I think is important when we're cooking, and we both have very different styles, we take turns. So typically I start and I do the baking, and the yes. desserts. And I and think that's the way everybody should start. The baking should happen first. The breads, the pies, the desserts, all should happen first. Get them out of the way so when the garlic comes into the scene, <laughs> they're and not contaminated the by the garlic. Savory food starts becoming a thing in the kitchen. You are just done with all the sweet stuff. And I like to clean as I go. Yes. So I was constantly cleaning and drying as I was processing and baking and making. We don't have a tiny kitchen. It's not the biggest kitchen, but I like I like it to be clean as I'm working. It's a tiny kitchen. I've been in smaller, Gary. But it's a tiny kitchen. It's not that tiny. And it's remarkable <laughs> how well we do in that well, tiny kitchen. Well, it's small, but it has a lot of surface area, counter surface well, to work on. Well, let me just restate that last comment that it's a tiny kitchen. You remodeled your kitchen when you moved into this apartment and made it part of the entire living space. It's an open floor plan now, but when you got it, it was tiny. It was a tiny kitchen because there were walls, but you yes. knocked the walls down. And I extended and, the and you extended counter the, surface. You extended the cooking area into what other people would have considered the living room. Okay. So you made it a big kitchen. Back to baking in the morning. I just want everyone to know that you did a remarkable job with your apartment. Well, it's important if you want to prepare meals and you want to enjoy planning your meals and making your meals, that your space is organized so that you're not investing so much energy trying to find things or figure things out. And there are ways to do that even in the smallest of spaces. Just a great job, Karen. Just a great job. Thank you. Anyway, I like to keep things clean as I am cooking so that when I was all done, the space was ready for Gary. Yeah. And Gary has a different technique. <laughs> yeah. I think you, you operate because you were trained. You have culinary training. And a lot of times when you have your training, you're trained in the cooking and then you put all the dirty dishes in the sinks for the dishwashers to clean. Yeah, shout out to all the dishwashers out there. Essential workers. They are so appreciated in the restaurant business and don't get enough of the praise. I think being a restaurateur myself and having owned several businesses that had hospitality slants to them, in other words, bars and restaurants, the most important job description was, for me, the dishwasher. Mm. That was the person that created harmony in the kitchen. (laughs) Because as you said, instinctually as a chef, you just throw the dish or the pot or the pan into the sink and magically it's clean. Now, since I have been without a dishwasher, I throw the pots and pans in the sink and then I do all the dishes afterwards. And I come to help. And I come to help you. That's true. We help each other. Okay. Okay, good. So your point about me having a different style was what? It's just a different style. That's all. Because I remember doing a lot of dishes while you were cooking and calling myself your sous chef. Are we having an argument here? (laughs) I think so. I think we're having an argument about who does more work in the kitchen for the other person. And I think we're equal. Yes, I think we're equal. Just different styles. Way different styles. Very different styles, yes. Yeah. And it's funny because I think they come from our training and our background, and I can hear I can hear my mother's voice in the background when I worked in her kitchen when I was young. 
and she didn't like me messing her kitchen. Yeah. I can remember my mother, father, sister, brother's voices in my head saying, why do you use every pot in the kitchen? Why do you make so much food? What are you doing? And that was part of growing up. So here we are, messing up each other's lives. Anyway, so we spent a day in the kitchen, and it wasn't even a full day because I wasn't really wiped out, exhausted by the end of the day. Right. And unlike what we're doing now, we didn't argue at all on Thursday. Oh, that's true. We were just poetry in motion together. We just stayed out of each other's ways. And after you finished the pies, I went in there and did all of my own cooking and all of my own cleaning. And <laughs> you did other things. Could it be that some of it had to do with the fact that we weren't going anywhere, we were only cooking for The pressure for was other. off. The pressure was off. Yes. So there was a good thing that came out of the Absolutely. sheltering in place pandemic thing. Yes. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> we I mean, always have to look for good things. Yeah. We had no pressure, nobody coming over. We weren't going anywhere. We were just there. We took our time. We had lots of Zoom calls in the morning. With different family Yeah, we had members. four Zoom events during the yeah, day. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little burnt on Zoom, but I still appreciate it. Yes. Still grateful burnt, for but Zoom. but appreciative. I had a chance to see family and friends. You had a chance to see family and friends. And the Zooming still is ongoing. I mean, we still have invitations for lots of Zoomland events. I call it in the Zoom Zoom room, which is taken after the playwright david rabe's play in the boom boom room i was going to be in a david rabe play before covid <laughs> i was going to be in hurley burley speaking of playwrights yesterday monday november 30th was mark twain's birthday david Lindsay abair's birthday mm. and david mamet's birthday oh, wow. so happy those birthday to writers. those three playwrights some of them are still on the earth with us today and some of them are not well, let's get back to what we made on Thanksgiving. Yeah, let's. I made my classic pumpkin pie and my classic tarte aux pommes, apple pie, French style. Yes, and it was the best pumpkin pie you ever made. I don't agree, but thank you. What it happened was, was I had this sweetened condensed milk that we got from this great package from Edward and Son, sweetened condensed milk made from coconut milk. Yeah, condensed milk made from coconut milk. I was so excited about that because I know that that goes into the traditional pumpkin pie recipes, condensed milk, or at least some traditional pumpkin pie recipes. And you put it in your pumpkin pie yeah, recipe. So it was 7.4 ounces. And I think most pumpkin pie recipes use a full 15 ounce or so can of condensed milk. And this was, as I say, sweetened. So I was thrown off as to how much sugar to add to the pumpkin pie. And I will confess, I do put sugar in some of my sweet treats that we have on occasion. And this is one of them. And so I didn't put any sugar in it. And I think it could have used a little. And I don't think it could have used and a little more. And there you have it. I thought it was perfect. And your apple pie recipe was perfect as well, although you weren't happy with the crust. I'm always playing. I'm always playing with flowers and crusts, and I made my own, like I've been doing. You made your own flour mix. You're, I made my own Because you're, you're gluten-free in the bakery. Yes. Gluten-free in the bakery. And it looked good, but I it wasn't my standard gluten-free mix, and I was just playing around. But it worked out. It just well, wasn't as best. I'm as good not as... complaining. It okay. was good. Good pie. Good pie. And pie is important. Every is. day should start but with pie. But what really topped it off was the big bowl no of Italian. No pun intended. <laughs> the big bowl of Italian meringue. That, that really I topped made. it off. And, you know, look, it's the consistency of Cool Whip, but you are calling it Italian meringue, and it is made with aqua fava. Let's talk a little bit about aqua fava and what you should not <laughs> have in your aqua fava before you make your Italian meringue or anything that you were going to put on top of something sweet. Karen, take it away. Okay, so aqua fava, as you know, is bean water. If you're cooking chickpeas, probably some other beans too, but chickpeas seem to be the favorite. The leftover bean water is very valuable and very useful. 
and we use it to whip into meringue. The secret is don't salt your water or don't buy canned beans with salt because the aquafaba will be salty and it won't be good in your sweet treats. And we heard from a listener yes. who shall go unnamed that said they did the recipe and it tasted salty. <laughs> and so the next question was, did you use salted aquafaba? Yeah, that, it's in the recipe. Just a reminder. It was and an this, easy thing this to particular miss. Italian meringue, it's not the easiest thing to make, but once you make it, you can freeze it. Yeah, and it's it lasts great. a long time. I wasn't a big Cool Whip eater growing up, but to me, it's a savior out there for those of you who want to transition to a plant-based diet, want to crowd out all of those things that you're normally eating, as opposed to going completely vegan. So a lot of people now like to use the term crowding out mm. those animal products, not pushing them out altogether. So, so here's some of the things that you can do to crowd out some of these products that are made with animal products. Yes, but we have to always clarify that when you go vegan, that does not mean you're eating healthfully. Absolutely not. So it's the whole food plant diet that doesn't contain sugar, salt, and oil. That is a goal right. for some to eat as healthy as possible. The way I did it was I quit eating everything and anything that was made with animal products, I didn't start by saying, but I'm also going to be a healthy plant-based eater. I just started by saying, I'm going to stop eating all animal products. And so I ate some junk food at first, and I ate some products that maybe aren't the healthiest thing. My goal was to stop eating animals, anything that came from an animal. If those of you out there are like me, then this aquafaba whip is for you. It's fun. Yeah, but you need a really powerful whipper. Yeah, we use a sand mixer because you want to leave the bowl with the mixer on for a while. It takes it takes a few minutes. It, what's interesting is when we first started making aquafaba, it took maybe 20 minutes to whip it to a nice stiff consistency. And now it takes just a few minutes, two, three, four minutes. And I think it's because we freeze it and then it whips really well when it's very cold. You have a really great method. You freeze it in ice cube trays. Yes. And then you pull out a few of the cubes and you, you, you freeze it in ice cube trays. And then you, once they're frozen, you put them in a container. Okay. And then when you need a certain amount of aquafaba, you pull out a, the equivalent to how many? Half a cup, whatever yeah. I need. Yeah. And then you pull out four or five ice cubes and melt it down. And, and you're not reducing it anymore, though, which is great. You I, know how I seem to have gotten to the hang of making garbanzo beans, cooking them from dry, adding enough water, but not too much water. Right. So that the res remaining water makes a perfect aquafaba. Yeah, it's very gelatinous. Well, we just can't talk enough about, about aquafaba. aquafaba. We haven't written a theme song for aquafaba. We're going to have to work on that one. Maybe change the words of the Aquaman theme. <laughs> aquafaba, you should get to know it this holiday season. <laughs> Send it as a gift. So the other things that we made this Thanksgiving that have been on our Thanksgiving list in the past were our three stuffed squashes our gourds stuffed with polenta. We used to s just stuff a giant red curry squash. That's how it started. And then over the years, we've also started stuffing smaller squashes. This year, we had three squashes. I don't remember the names, but you do. Yeah, I think we talked about them last week. Right. And I made the polenta stuffing. My point is we heard from a listener the other day, and they said that they also stuffed a squash. And Yes, they thanked us for the recipe, sent us the photo, and it was beautiful. And it's always lovely to hear from you and to hear from those who have tried some of our recipes. Yeah. So if you have, let us know and send a picture. The picture was great. Getting the message was great. It touched my heart. I and think theirs looked Better than ours. Theirs did look they better really than ours. They really looked good. Yeah, they really. it was a masterpiece. <laughs> it was great. You made the pumpkin seed encrusted tofu and the pumpkin seed encrusted mushroom. <laughs> Gary's gagging as he says that because he doesn't like 
Porto Porto Bello ma- yes. ma- mushroom. But we wanted to try an alternative to tofu because some people don't like soy or some people don't like tofu. Okay, we're cool. And an alternative as a main dish could be portobello mushroom. Yeah, we no. went crazy with the mushrooms. That's because I love you. And so <laughs> oh, they were good. Yeah, we made a, a gravy with the criminy mushrooms that mm-hmm. were in the refrigerator. Criminy. Some Japanese yams. We just sliced the yams, put them in the oven. They were fabulous. That's my favorite yam. Can we take a yam moment? Yam. A yam, sweet yam. potato. Yam, we can. I'm not going to talk about the difference and if one is the other yam or sweet potato. All I want to say is that there are many different varieties of root vegetables, tubers, etc. You should try them all. And when it comes to sweet potatoes, also known as yams, one or the other, whatever. The Japanese sweet potato, it has a dark purplish skin and a very light yellow flesh. Flesh, And it is the sweetest of all of the sweet tubers oh, out there. It is so good. It's fabulous. And really, it's, my favorite. Yeah, so we used to get the classic orange skin, orange inside, and those are fine, but... We're kind of nuts over the sweet one. Now, we like purple sweet potatoes, too, and you've heard us go on and on about purple sweet potatoes. The Stokes purple sweets are They're quite excellent. good, too. But this is my favorite. The Japanese yam is my favorite. Talking about butter. Who, who mentioned butter? Put a little of Miyoko's butter on there, which we make ourselves here at Responsible Eating and Living. We make it from scratch. It is delicious to me it's dessert yes again not the healthiest thing but a fun now, treat on special occasions i am not talking health today yes but you are and that's why we're such a perfect team <laughs> and us just a perfect balance garlic mashed potatoes had to have them i roast the garlic first and then i add it to the mashed potatoes i use yukon gold and i use a little of karen's cashew yogurt in there so it's like a sour cream hit for those of you transitioning and miss your sour cream Get some cashew yogurt, Forager makes it, or make it yourself. We have a recipe up at Responsible Eating and Living. It's a lot of fun to make. I think the nut-based yogurts are really a great substitute for sour cream, as you mentioned. Oh, yeah. Can't live without it. It hits the flavor profile that you want in a sour cream. It's rich and creamy, and it also comes with all those good bugs. Yes, and if you want to put chives on top... Fantastic. If you want to put some bacon, get some tempeh bacon. Fantastic. You'll never know you're not eating animals, but the animals will know. We made a cranberry sauce with fresh cranberries. I mean, we were in the kitchen. I was in the kitchen. Let me ask you a question, Gary. Yes. Does your cranberry sauce have sugar in it? This year it did not. It had dates in it. There you go. Yeah. I never thought that cranberry sauce could be made without sugar because cranberries are so tart. You know what interests me in this program today <laughs> is that you don't like orange juice in your cranberry oh, sauce. that's true. And I was kind of shocked. You like orange juice in your cranberries sauce? I do. Oh. And you know what? Because I love you, I left it out. I got a thing about oranges. You and do? Let's, let's hear about it. Okay. To begin with, I don't do well drinking orange juice. Right. I find it really irritates my stomach. Acid reflux kind of thing? Yes. And that's have, just have you tried, me. Have you tried putting a little vodka in it before you drink it? <laughs> it's a great pick-me-up in the morning. Well, the solution is when you're doing whole food plant-based is minimally processed. So that means eating the orange, not drinking orange juice. And I have no problem eating an orange. Well, I'm all for putting the entire orange without the peel, maybe even some of the peel into the cranberry sauce. And I think it's that white, what do you call the white stuff inside that helps you digest the The, acidic part of the orange. I call it the white stuff inside. Yeah, the pulp, the white stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I also don't like oranges mixed with different fruits in a fruit salad. Right. And do you hear that, Mom? My mother listens to this show every week. Thank you, Mom. And she loves, she's the queen of fruit salads. But I don't like oranges in a fruit salad. Yeah, and no, she always I know. puts oranges in the fruit salad mixed with pineapple. It just doesn't go for me. Hey, now let's not pick on Lois and her <laughs> fabulous fruit salad they and are. her fruit platters. I just don't like oranges in there. 
You know, I've seen Lois make many a fruit platter over the years, and the last item she always puts on, which I think is her favorite item, are the sliced oranges. Yeah, yeah. Karen, some of us like oranges, okay? <laughs> Lois, you keep putting those oranges on that fruit platter. Thank you. Well, next year, maybe you can make half and half. No, I'm just with kidding. Because the cranberry sauce you made is perfect. Yeah, I'm just giving you a bad time. I could take or leave oranges, but it was it was a shock to me, maybe a little heartbreaking that you didn't like oranges. And you know what it's good with when we're having leftovers? It's good with the yogurt. Yeah. Oh, cranberry sauce? Yeah, Forget about it. Good. Put it on everything. Mm. We put it on the banana bread you made yesterday, remember? Yes, yes. It was great. With some of our almond ricotta. Oh, the almond ricotta. That makes everything a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you put a little sweetener on it, which we did with the date sweetened cranberry sauce. Thank our you. nickname for our almond ricotta recipe is crack. crack. I mean, I don't believe in crack, but <laughs> it's a slang term for something that you just can't get enough of. You're addicted to it. It's addicting. Back to the tofu or portobello mushroom encrusted steaks yes i started using a breading a few years ago which did not contain bread or oil <laughs> or oil because we bake them we don't sure fry them or saute them and i want to remind you because i love this i grind pumpkin seeds normally this time but we didn't have pumpkin seeds so i use sunflower oh, seeds. oh yeah that's what was different Yes, sunflower seeds. And you can use almonds as well and grind them up with some spices like onion powder, garlic powder, turmeric, black pepper. You can change those spices up however you like. And that makes a really great breading. And what's good about it, not just because it doesn't have bread in it, but it has the natural fat. So you're not frying it, but it still tastes, it still has that rich Almost fried flavor. Right, because the the seeds are full of oil, natural oil, mm -hmm. right? Did you just say that? <laughs> they have, yeah, they, it's they a have, whole food fat. It's a whole food fat, so it tastes like you deep fried it, crispy. Yeah, yeah. we've Very. made onion rings with this breading, we've zucchini made zucchini sticks. fries, yeah, it's and this time stuff. we tried it with the portobello and it was amazing. Yeah, it was so amazing. Yeah, you didn't have the portobello mushroom. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> Did you see? I rolled my eyes. Let's talk now about something that's very important. Let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, Giving Tuesday. Today is Giving Tuesday. Today is Giving Tuesday. We are a nonprofit. Yes. And we could use some giving. Please consider giving to your favorite organization. That's, that's our message. Give. Give. Give on Giving Tuesday. We know so many uh, wonderful people that are suffering right now, that are hurting people in the restaurant business. So if you have a favorite restaurant and it's trying to stay open and they have gift cards, go out there and buy some gift cards from your favorite restaurant or just give them some money. I know so many people in the business that are hurting. All businesses, the arts. Uh, Karen and I were supposed to be doing plays right now. We were supposed to be working and we're still working, but we're but not, not on stage. We're not doing theater. And there's a lot of theater companies out there. One of them we're working for. And what are we doing for them? We're doing a cook along. We're doing a cook along. And what are we cooking? Pumpkin seed encrusted tofu steaks and pumpkin seed encrusted mushrooms. If you want to make these things that we're talking about, the garlic mashed potatoes, the gravy with mushrooms. <laughs> Some of the other things we talked about. Sign up for this great program that the Swing and Gourmets are going to be doing on Sunday, the 13th of December. Go to playfulpeople.org and sign up. I will have a link on this program's post. I will also have a link on the responsibleadingandliving.com homepage. It'll be very easy to find if you are interested. If you are interested, and you know, it's going to be fun. It is going and to be And we're going fun. to be able to see everybody. Because it's on Zoom. Because it's on Zoom. So you can see us. We can see you. We may sing a few songs. Absolutely. And we're... in the end, we'll all have a, a yummy dinner. Yeah. To enjoy. It's, 
And it's a great organization. It's a nonprofit theater company. They do great work. They're a family theater company. Karen and I are really looking forward to it. It's West Coast time. So uh, we're going to be up late. But if you're on the West Coast, you won't be up late. Our menu is pumpkin seed encrusted tofu steak or portobello mushroom steak with criminy mushroom gravy, Yukon gold garlic mashed potatoes, sautéed broccoli rabe with shallots and pecans. You know, pecans are a great substitute for bacon. They have this mm. bacony flavor. Mm -hmm. So we're going to throw some of that into the broccoli rabe. Karen has a famous dessert that she makes all of the time. Poached pears, very simple, with a raspberry coulis. I like it because it's fresh and elegant and simple at all at the same time. And the money goes to Playful People Productions, a company that we worked for on occasion and would have been out there directing a play right now with them. But instead, I'm working from Zoom land and we're doing Romeo and Juliet and we're turning it into a radio play and it's turning into be quite a wonderful project. It'll be performed or it'll go on the air sometime next year in the early part of next year. Because once we're finished recording it, uh, we'll go into the editing room and do all the post-production stuff, add the foley, add the music, a great original score by a wonderful composer, Brennan Whitaker. This will be a fun thing. But anyway, if you want to see Karen and I cook and hear us sing and have some fun and give some money to a wonderful organization, Playful People Productions, sign up. Go to the playfulpeople.org website, and as Karen said, she will have links to that program here on our website. So that's something to talk about on Giving Tuesday. And again, if you want to give to responsibleeatingandliving.com, go there. Click Do on the donate click button. Click on the donate button and give what you can. We make it easy. Okay, enough about Giving Tuesday. Let's move on. You had some interesting things happen with listeners. They've been writing in. Thank you so much. If you have a comment and want to write into Responsible Eating and Living and give us your questions or comments or ask us things and send us an email at info at realmeals.org. Can we talk a little bit about this COVID-19 pandemic? Yes, let's, because the numbers are up again and hospitals are at capacities and people are just not getting it. The numbers are going up. And let's talk about numbers because I've always been a numbers person, a data person. I love data. I love numbers. And I love what they can tell us. The truth is, though, that depending on how you analyze numbers, the results can be different. And you can manipulate numbers to get the results you want. Right. And that can be very confusing because there's not a lot of transparency about how some things are calculated. And maybe there are, but who has the time to go and read and search and look? So the bottom line is there's a lot of confusion. Exactly. And I like to just see what is obvious and what is obvious in the areas that are having very high counts, the hospitals are getting overwhelmed again. Yes. Now, this isn't everywhere. This is only in hot spots, but they're running out of personal protective equipment. Again. Again, and beds in the emergency rooms. The essential workers, the healthcare workers are overwhelmed again. Again. Something is happening. And there are people that are saying that the numbers of deaths, for example, are conflated when we talk about due to COVID-19. I want to say that this is complicated. Yes, very complicated. It's very complicated. Have you ever read a death certificate if you've had a loved one die and you see what they died of? Sometimes, well, very often, especially with chronic diseases, there are a number of things going on. So you may have a cancer, but you end up with a heart attack. You may have one thing and die of pneumonia, but they're all working together against you. Right, exactly. So they may put one reason down in that moment that might have been the final straw. 
But you have to understand that degrading health is affected by many things. Now, some people will say <laughs> that all those chronic diseases out there are the same disease, and it's just from poor nutrition and poor lifestyle. I would say that. And yeah, but the point is a lot of people were putting COVID-19 down on death certificates. And some people are saying the numbers now are conflated, that the number of people that died weren't all because of COVID-19. And I keep saying, look at the hotspots. The hospitals are overwhelmed. There is a problem here. There is a pandemic. There is a crisis. So whatever numbers you want to believe or not believe, <laughs> there is something happening and it's not good. And the whole world is in on this together. And you cannot believe that it is a conspiracy that is affecting the entire planet, that everybody would buy in, that some small group is creating this conspiracy and they've got control of the entire planet. You've seen one too many sci-fi movies. There but what you're really saying is a lot of the precautions that we could take against these viruses, no one is talking about how nutrition can Bolster, Make a big difference. Bolster your immune system so that you can fight these diseases. Exactly. Because we're all walking around unhealthy to begin with. We're talking about masks. We're talking about washing hands. We're talking about a vaccine that may be coming soon. Right. But we need a leading voice. We need a leading directive from, are there any medical establishments that we trust? From credible sources that say everyone needs to be eating better and eliminating right. the junk, eliminating, reducing animal products, sugar processed, highly processed foods. But the problem is it's related to capitalism and profits. So we don't hear that. So I'm going to quote you right now. In your opinion, a whole food, minimally processed, high nutrient plant diet, good sleep, regular exercise, hand washing, mask wearing, social distancing, supplementation with vitamins D, B12, and zinc are the best tools we have right now to keep ourselves healthy and safe. I believe that. Yeah, I believe it too. And I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to sum up. There are numerous chronic illnesses out there. People end up dying of pneumonia, not one of these chronic illnesses. They're all related. It could be one thing or another, but they're all part of poor health and comorbidity increases risk of dying from COVID-19, but just in general. And I think what COVID-19 has done is tip the scales for some people and they ended up getting very sick or dying sooner than they would have. And nobody's talking about getting healthy. Yes, but this, the message is it's not just COVID-19. It's all the chronic illnesses out there because... How many people die of heart disease every year? And that's unnecessary. Most heart disease is preventable. Right. Much of the heart disease cases are reversible. Type 2 diabetes, preventable and often reversible. Right. Some 60% or so of cancers are preventable. And you don't, I know you don't appreciate programs that cause fear, and that's not what we're doing here. Fear is, as you would say, fear is not empowering. You prefer to educate, inform, and inspire positive action. Well, we hear a lot of people scaring people. They're either saying the virus isn't real or the regulations that are coming out or the lockdown that we have is infringing on our personal freedoms. Yeah. And we hear so many things. Fear mongering. It's fear mongering. Right. It's not empowering. It's not helpful. So no. what I recommend is if you're listening to a program that you like or you're listening to a person that you like and you're starting to get scared. Right. I would turn them off. Exactly. You know, turn them off. to quote Mark Twain, whose birthday it was yesterday, human beings can be awful cruel to one another. Well, a lot of folks are just trying to scare you. And I'm not saying put your head in the sand. I'm not saying be ignorant. I'm saying... Listen to us. <laughs> we're telling you the truth. That's what we're here for. Hey, I don't know everything. We are a nonprofit. Everything. We have no line on making any money <laughs> from anybody. We're just here to find the truth and give it back to you because we like you 
and don't want to scare you. But there's a lot of people out there that do want to scare you. Hey, let's talk about the vaccines that are coming out. Yeah, you had some comments about vaccines a while back. Well, I have some think... thoughts. And again, I don't know everything. There are people in the anti-vax corner and there are people in the pro-vax corner. I feel like I'm somewhere in between. You're kind of the referee at this point. <laughs> In this corner, there's the anti-vaxxers, and in this corner, there's the pro-vaxxers. Let's wrestle. Ready? Wrestle. Yeah. The pro-vax people will tell you that vaccines are safe. The anti-vax people, many of them have experienced some scary, very sad situations with the health of their children, health of family members, and they're absolutely convinced it correlates or is connected somehow with vaccinations. And even though a lot of the studies say that that's not true, there is information out there that's compelling. And I don't think it's black and white. Well, you're not a fan of vaccines. Mostly I'm not because, a fan of vaccines. Mostly because of capitalism and for-profit pharmaceutical companies who seem to compromise safety for bigger profits. I have never had a flu shot. I personally don't want to have a flu shot. One reason is because it's not vegan. But I've never been convinced that that is the best route to go. The best route for me is a whole food plant diet, eating lots of nutrients that boost my immune system, keep me healthy, washing hands, and now adding the mask element when necessary. And also, I know that in, you, you believe in theory vaccines can be safe, but when mixed with preservatives, they are not the same as what no. had been tested for approval. And there are these adjuvants, things that make the vaccine more effective or work more quickly. And there are these interactions that happen and those things aren't always tested. And those can be causing health problems. It's a very complicated S issue and it's, it can be scary. So again, get healthy, get, get healthy. healthy, eat healthy, eat healthy and listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> Wash your hands, wear a mask. Get healthy, work yeah. out, get up, walk. Listen to this program on your earbuds while taking a walk in the rain. <laughs> well, you like taking walks in the rain. I was, when I got here 12 years ago, I'm from California, so there you have very little rain. And once I started living with you here in New York, I had to walk in the rain or jog in the rain. The secret is... The looking right clothing yeah. and looking good. The secret is wardrobe. <laughs> wardrobe. Wardrobe can save your life. Weather wardrobe. Right. The only time I ever wore a ski jacket, or a, I guess we call them parkas now on the East Coast, right? But the only time I ever wore one, when there was a lift ticket attached to it and I was going skiing. Now, that item in my wardrobe saves my life every winter, that, that warm winter coat. Because in California, a warm winter yes. coat was only used and layers was only used in the ski resorts of Lake Tahoe with lift tickets attached to the zipper <laughs> layers but, are so important yeah so wardrobe is important so but every get ten, healthy every 10 degrees drop in temperature requires a slight change in wardrobe I find that under 40 degrees I definitely need long underwear long underwear was something again that I never was never my friend mm -hmm. I, I never knew about it if you dress right you can get out there and keep exercising. You can just get outside in, yeah. in, in cold weather. But wear your mask now, especially. And you know what's nice about masks in the winter is I've worn a mask in the winter. It saves my face from freezing. There are masks. What do you call them? Those, uh, those things that used to give me when I was first here because I was so the, cold. The face mask? Uh, you slip Ski them on. Gaiters. Neck oh, gaiters. Neck gait oh, the, just over the neck. The neck gaiter you can use as a mask. You can yeah. cover up your, your surgical mask and it works really well and, and keeps you looking like you have thought about your wardrobe before heading out. Which is important to people like Gary. Yeah, you have to always look. You have to look good. You have to look good. I'm not the best navigator in the snow, but I try and look good while I, while I fall on my butt. I want to add that water is also important. And I don't think you included that in my recommendation, anti-COVID and general good health recommendations, but hydrating is important. We're actually relearning that in our own singing practice. Right. Because when you're not hydrated enough and you're singing, you start to get that... Phlegm. <laughs> that crud. Yeah. And when you're hydrating all day long, 
and maybe even steaming before you sing. That makes a big difference. As the weather gets colder, and here we are in New York, and it's getting colder, and the heaters come on, the air gets drier. You want to keep your air moist. I think you're more susceptible to colds and flus when the air is dry. Humidifiers. Humidifiers can be good. Or a good thing. And hydrate, hydrating. Can't say enough about water. And clean water. So let's talk about clean water because there's something we do that we need to always remind folks about. You might even be hearing the noise in the background of our water distiller. Talk about the water distiller. You may know I'm a big fan of the Aqua Nui water distiller. Whatever you're using to drink your water, I believe tap water is best once purified. I don't recommend buying your water from somewhere else in plastic. And so the Aqua Nui people make water distillers. They make water distillers. I like distillation best because you're always getting the top specification of your appliance every time. With other filtered systems, the filter degrades over time. So you're not getting as efficient uh, purification as you do with distillation every time. Now, some people don't like distillation they say that it leaves out minerals. Minerals. I don't worry about that, and you shouldn't worry about that when you're getting minerals from your food. But it's a bit labor intensive, especially the one we have. It's small. But you get used to it. It's not plumbed into the water system. We have to fill it up. Not we have to yet. Empty it. We'll we'll get to that point in our lives at some point where we'll actually build a house and incorporate the water distilling yeah. system. But clean water is really important because even though we are quite blessed to have running water in our home, it travels a long way to get here. And on the way, it picks up shit. <laughs> it picks up Aaron. toxins. And it could be from the pipes in your building. It could be pipes before coming to your building. It could be things leaching into the water supply. You know what we're probably going to see in the lobby of our apartment building now because we have power, power over our listeners. Last week, we talked about the water pick. That's right. And all of a sudden, we go down to our lobby to pick up our packages from our wonderful doorman, Genshin, and we saw that someone was getting the water pick water flosser. And Karen immediately said, I wonder if they're listening to our program. (laughs) And that was really strange. So maybe next week we'll see an Aqua Nui water distiller in the lobby. Maybe. Wow, wouldn't that be cool? That would be be fun. The other thing we got was a waffle iron. And wow, it took forever to find a waffle iron that didn't have poison mixed in with the coating, right? And I'm going to try and connect all these dots and connect this waffle iron to water in a moment. But just stay with me. So everybody knows nowadays, I think, that Teflon is the devil's nonstick surface. The devil. (laughs) Teflon has a bad rap. The Teflon coating is polytetrafluoroethylene or PTFE. And back in the old days, before 2013, Teflon used a polyfluorinated compound, PFA. Lots of acronyms here. They used a perfluorooctanoic acid, PFOA, to make the PTFE, the polytetrafluoroethylene chemical that is known as Teflon. Okay, who cares? These are complicated names. The thing is, they're, they're toxic and they get into the water supply. And you may remember, I remember reading in the New York Times back in 2016, this expose, and it was a great story, and I'll link it because it's worth reading and reading again. The lawyer who became DuPont's worst nightmare, and he exposed over years and years of research and interviews and difficulties that DuPont was knowingly, 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 knowingly polluting a certain area's water, putting this pollutant, this PFOA into the water supply. And certain farmers knew about it because their animals were dying. And it took a long time and finally DuPont lost. You can read the article, but in some ways it's kind of depressing because there are hundreds of cases that they're being sued for, and they have like an infinite amount of time to 
address them. So in the end, it doesn't really hurt them too much. But what did happen was it moved them to stop using this PFOA in order to make Teflon. So now they use some other chemicals. And the question is, are they any better or we just haven't figured it out yet that those aren't any good? Right. So the point is you really want to avoid Teflon. Frankly, I used to work for DuPont. It was my first job out of college. You used to work for DuPont? I I worked for them for a year and a half. And what did you do for DuPont? I was a chemical engineer. I made titanium dioxide for paints, papers, and plastics. And what is titanium dioxide? It is a white pigment. So you made stuff to make paint white? Yes, to make paper white, to make plastics white. So isn't that interesting? It's fascinating. I don't encourage buying Teflon. And for people that like to cook, what pans can we use? So here's the punchline to all of this discussion about the waffle iron. (laughs) Right. What did we end up finding that was only 20 bucks? Yeah, we got the Oster Dura Ceramic Waffle Maker. It's very inexpensive. It's a ceramic coated material. And I haven't found anything wrong with it yet. No, we made waffles on it. But it seems... And we're really rough on our waffle iron because we don't use, we don't make waffles that are easy to make. We make waffles that are difficult to make. Well, they don't have eggs in them, so they take a little longer. I should rephrase that. We make waffles that are difficult to bake. They're really easy to make, but you have to bake them a little longer than five minutes. You have to bake them longer. So usually the instructions say waffles may take four to five minutes. Our waffles take about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. The problem with the waffle maker we got was it's small. It makes like one serving. It's kind of tiny. So we're either going to have to get another one or... And they're inexpensive enough where we could get another one. Yeah, I'm just waiting to find out if anybody's going to make a slightly bigger one. But the only bigger ones that are out there have the the PTFE in it. And the other option is an outrageously priced stainless steel waffle maker. Stainless steel waffle maker, which you can find in a commercial restaurant supply store. It was $1,000. But if you want to know where I found it, I think it's Wells. Wells, yes, that's the company, Wells. They make restaurant equipment. And they have a stainless steel waffle iron for around 1000 bucks. But you found one for $20. bucks. i am going to bet that we see one in the lobby next week with all of the packages that we go to pick up along with the Aqua Nui water distiller. I think we're going to see that. Well, back to that story in the New York Times, a lawyer who became DuPont's worst nightmare. You may know a version of that story because Mark Ruffalo starred in a movie called Dark Waters, and it was based on that story with the lawyer Rob Billot. That's the character that he played. And now I'm going to tie it all to water. Now we get to the point. So as I mentioned before, this um, PFOA was leaked and got into the environment and was killing animals and wreaking havoc. And there are lots of lawsuits out today that are related to these PFAs. The point is that it's not just Teflon manufacturing. It's all kinds of manufacturing that may leak intentionally or unintentionally toxic chemicals into our environment and they can go into your water supply and some of them are going regularly and some of them are sporadic just there might be an accident not all of them are reported everything isn't regulated as well as it should be and this affects your water supply and that's how I get to distillation because this is the way I know I'm going to have the cleanest, purest water I can. Right. And there are other products out there that filter your water. You can get reverse osmosis. There are other kinds of charcoal filtrations. There are lots of them out there, and they're getting better all the time. I still stick with distillation, but we also have an under-the-sink charcoal filter that we change on a regular basis every six months or so. There are many out there. Do the best you can. For those of you who have changed a charcoal filter from time to time, they get dirty. Ugh. Yeah, you can see what's in your water. You can see what's in your water because when it goes in, it's white. Probably made white by the stuff you used to make for DuPont. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But when it comes out, it's this murky brown color and we highly recommend you filter your water some way. 
get some of that stuff out. I'm planning on bringing on some guests in the yes. next few weeks. I'm going to be talking with Andrea Hanneman, who's also known as Earthy Andy, and she has a cookbook, and we're going to be talking about that. And then a medical doctor that I adore, Dr. Stancic, will be back on the program. She has a new book coming out. If you haven't heard, What's Missing from Medicine? Six Lifestyle Changes to Overcome Chronic Illness. Its publication date is January 12th. And I think I will have her on the program next week or the week after. I love her story. She's the one responsible for the documentary Code Blue. And she's the one who had multiple sclerosis and it was debilitating. And she was in med school and then a doctor and finally discovered lifestyle medicine, discovered a whole food plant diet and turned her life around and now she's amazing she's this fit healthy beautiful person in and out and has done incredible work there's not enough information about multiple sclerosis it's an autoimmune disease and most people who are diagnosed with it are treated with drugs that have all kinds of side effects and many people who are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis can turn their disease around, go into remission, and lead a normal life. And they do it with nutritional excellence and healthy lifestyle and exercise. So the things that will help you with multiple sclerosis can also help you with COVID-19 and other chronic illnesses. Very well said, Karen. Yeah, so I'm really excited to talk to her. And I've got A stack of books on my bookshelf. Sent to you by publishers. With some really fun titles. And you'll hear about them soon, as soon as I schedule the authors on this program. Yeah, we talk about the Bosch boys all the time. They have a new cookbook out called... Speedy Bosch. Speedy Bosch. You'll be talking to them again. Yeah, they're fun. There's just a lot of great programming coming up. Coming up. It's December 1st. I can't believe we made it all the way to December. Can you? No, 2020 I is almost on the way out, and we are all looking forward to what 2021 will bring. Hopefully, a much better year with good health and improvement and good... in society for everyone. Yeah, we got through Cyber Monday. Did you buy anything? I didn't. Did you? I didn't buy anything. You know, I made a conscious effort not to go online and look at anything. Well, I I looked at glasses because I need glasses. But but you didn't buy any. I didn't buy any because I kept getting plagued by all of these pop-ups. And I was just trying to look at glasses. And I just kept getting slammed with all of these pop-ups about buy now and get another 5% off. Buy now and get another 2%. It was really, really insulting. Now, we have to acknowledge that a lot of businesses have taken tremendous hits because of the coronavirus. Yes, and a lot of... a lot of small businesses have taken tremendous hits because they don't have the foundation. They don't have... The infrastructure for (laughs) (laughs) pop-ups. They just don't have the wealth behind them to keep them going through this very difficult time. The winter holidays are coming up, and this is the last big consumer push of the year to get everybody to buy stuff. Yes. And while I want to encourage people to support local businesses, I also want to remind you that buying stuff is not necessarily a good thing. So companies like Amazon buy a tremendous amount And they try and squeeze that price down so that the creator of the product gets very little profit. And then Amazon will sell these items for cheaper than anybody else because they've squeezed whatever they can out of the company that's offering it. And sometimes these are small vendors so that they can sell for the least price possible. And we're all looking for the best price, but we have to consider the implications in who we support. So when you're thinking about buying things for the holidays or any time at all, think of the big picture. 
Think of not only what you're saving today, but who you're supporting, who you may want to be around later. I think a really good practice would be to actually try and find people at the local level who are trying to sell you something that they've created. Support real people, real yeah. people that you know. We know a lot of musicians, for example, who normally this time of year, they would be extremely busy playing gigs all over. In New York, especially Live bands have been a big part of holiday parties. Live bands have kind of disappeared because of DJs and a lot of digital music that people can play, but we've kept the live band alive here in New York City. I know my brother was a musician in high-end bands for a very long time at big parties, and the end of the year was always a big time to make some good money. Sure, lots of gigs. And, and now uh, the big party is gone because of COVID-19. Yes, and it's and a very a difficult time for live musicians. It's a very difficult time for performing artists in general. Yes, it is. So if you have an opportunity to, to buy, think about... Buy gifts, that CD on your friend's Facebook page that they're trying to sell because you've been enjoying their music that they've been creating at home during this pandemic... And now a lot of them that I know are trying to sell their CDs online just to try and keep their lights on at home. So We just want to encourage supporting artists, supporting local businesses, however you can, rather than buying stuff that's going to clutter up your house or buy something that maybe whoever you're giving it to, it's just something they're, they don't need or want. So really put some thought into gift giving this year. Especially now on December 1st and Giving Tuesday. Think about it before you give. To... And it doesn't have to be something you can put in a box. You can offer to cook something for someone. You right. can offer to cook together with someone in your pod. You could treat someone to the Swing Gourmets cook along. Yeah. That's something everyone can enjoy, right? Don't forget about the Swing and Gourmets cook along with Heart Glass and Dimate. Did we talk about that enough? <laughs> so there are lots of things that you can buy that won't take up extra space in your closet, but can really help the people that are offering it and also the people that are receiving it. And a shout out to your brother, the musician, who put together the music that you are about to listen to now. Yes, my brother Barry Hartglass wrote the music, the intro music to this program and the outro music and I love hearing it every time. Yeah, Barry's a talented, talented man. I think we're out of time. So thanks for joining me, Gary. Thanks for joining me, everyone, for It's All About Food. Everybody, have, have a, a delicious, delicious week! week.